I think some defining moments of my life were certainly related to my childhood in a warlike environment in Argentina, where there was a, a fascist dictatorship that would randomly kill people, including my my first cousin, David Varsavsky, and classmates from high school. And, uh, and I lived through what's uh, known as the Dirty War. And uh, so the, when the situation got really bad, I had to flee Argentina with my family. Senator Moynihan in the States, in New York, and gave us refugee visas. And I think my perception of risk after that upbringing was never the same. And when people say, oh, you undertake so many risky ventures, I tend to say, well, certainly not as ri risky as going to high school when I was growing up. Phone is the largest Wi-Fi network in the world now, but it was built on a crazy idea. You share a little Wi-Fi at home and you roam the world for free. And investing in these and, and having the vision and the <clears throat> the trust that this was going to actually work. That's an example of a, of an idea that could have totally flopped, but I was so convinced that it would work and people would actually do this. And now there's 6.2 million hotspots around the world growing 1 million in the last four months. What I do in, not for, in the not-for-profit world, I also do more like a venture type of philanthropy where I for example, the Varsavsky Foundation donated $11 million or $1 per child in Argentina in the year 2000 to start Educar. And Educar is the, the largest educational project in Argentina right now. Um, it involves connecting the schools of Argentina to the internet, training teachers and providing educational material. But the interesting thing is that even though $11 million may sound like a lot of money, it's less than 4% of all the money that was given by other people, especially the government of Argentina, when they realized how valuable this project was. The rules are there for a reason. They were made by people and they can be changed by people. Um, a lot of the work I've done is not about breaking rules, it's about convincing other people that certain rules didn't make sense. Well, a lot of the businesses I've been involved with since the mid-80s when I was at school had to do with, with uh, convincing authorities to change rules, uh, whether it was the liberating telecommunications in Europe and participating in the, in the movement that led to the 98 liberalization of telecoms in Europe, or when I was at school it was about the loft movement in downtown Manhattan and convincing the city that reserving all this space for industry had no was useless because industries were disappearing and what they should care about is the vibrancy of the city and not the vibrancy of some plumbing industry that was moving to Asia anyway. When the economy is really bad, the cost, the opportunity cost of, of being entrepreneurial is, is lower. When your alternative is to be unemployed, trying to become an entrepreneur is less costly than when the economy is booming.